Hi everybody, so today I have a tactics video looking at the strategy and tactics of a avatar of Cain in your Eldar army. You know, this guy is a real thug on the battlefield. He is a melee combatant, par none. I mean, he can really mix it up in a melee combat. He even has a pretty powerful uh, shooting gun. I mean, the guy comes with a Melta, you know, the, the equivalent of a Melta. So uh, he's a real thug. He's surprisingly not that expensive. He's uh, uh, about 155 points. And for those points, I honestly challenge you, I challenge you to find something in another codex uh, that comes close to this guy or bests him for that point level and uh, his abilities. Uh, let's talk about his stats. Okay, so what do we have here? We have a monstrous creature, four wounds, strength toughness six, three plus armor save, four plus invulnerable save. I mean, that alone makes him a thug. His initiative is very fast, even for Eldar, it's six. And he's got a weapon skill of ten. Let me repeat that, a weapon skill of ten. To give you some sense of perspective of what that means, a Grey Knight Terminator will need fives to hit him because it's it's a double plus one or more uh, weapon skill difference when this guy's weapon skill of four goes up against weapon skill of ten. I mean, it's just amazing how hard it is to hit this guy with, with average characters and even, you know, super-powered characters for other codexes, some of which cost twice as many points as him, need fours to hit him, and he will hit just about everything on threes. Very, very impressive. Four attacks, five on the charge, real thug to deal with. You know, uh, what, what else do you need to know about him? Um, he, he has that 4 plus invulnerable, uh, which is given to him by being a demon. And Eldar is one of these old codexes that has a lot of rules that are, are old or non-existent. I mean, strangely enough, new demons, they're all, they're all eternal warriors. They cannot be instant killed. He does not have eternal warrior, unfortunately. The avatar is not an eternal warrior, despite being a demon, getting a, you know, invulnerable save from it and all that stuff. So uh, that's a real problem for him, because... Um, you know things that are that strangely cause instant death. You know, like uh, those those swords that the Tyranids can take. Um, you know, uh, the the Storm Lord. Uh, you know, force weapons they can get through and kill him. You know, it, it can be a real problem, and it's something we're going to talk about later. It's not as much of a problem as it sounds like, though, because there are ways to get around it, and I'll tell you uh, a little bit about that. Um, what else about him? He has an inspiring presence, so all Eldar within twelve inches of him anywhere within this 12-inch bubble around him, become fearless. Now, that is actually a great ability. You know, the, it's hard to get fearless in, in codexes that aren't Space Marine codexes. And in fact, Space Marine codexes have an even better rule than fearless. They have their end, they shall know no fear rule, which is like, you know, having all the best parts of being fearless without having to take all the worst ones. Um, but in a codex like Eldar, fearlessness is really, really useful. I mean, there's nothing worse than Eldred fighting in combat, you know, beating his way through half an army, then suddenly has one bad combat where he whiffs his attacks, takes one wound because he failed his rollable three plus, and then loses combat and runs, gets run off the board. You know, there's nothing worse than that in Eldar, and um, fearlessness is a big deal. You know, your guardians are hanging around near this guy; they're not going to run off the board. Uh, another thing to know about him is that he has an immunity to meltas and any kind of flame weapon imaginable in the game. He is completely immune to uh, anything with the flame ability in it, Meltas, Flamers, you know, any other weird stuff that comes out that has flame in it. Totally immune to that stuff. Pretty useful ability since there's so many Flamers and, uh, and Meltas going around these days. So, strategy-wise, why do you use this guy? What does he give to your army? He is the linchpin of your army. He can be a really effective centerpiece for your army, uh, strategic-wise, uh, because he can combat anything in the game. He can literally take on any threat. It's a vehicle, he can wreck it. It's a walker, he can beat it down. It's a special character, he will be better than that special character, if you've fortuned him and if you've supported him well. He can, you know, he can take down units on his own, entire units of guys, he will just rip through them. They'll have almost no chance of touching him, uh, unless they are really decked out for, for combat. He's just a real linchpin for the army. Now, he's a monstrous creature, so he won't be able to join units. So you've got to have him out on his own. But, uh, you know, he is just a real thug. So let's talk tactics. 
The first thing I'm going to say is that, you know, as much as I love this guy, I almost never take him unless I can also fortune him with a Farseer nearby. I always got to have fortune going on him, or at least the possibility of fortune uh, during a game for me to really want to take this guy. Why is that? Without fortune, he's still a very excellent figure. The guy's 155 points, tons of wounds, tons of strength. I mean, amazing stats. He's going to rip through a lot of things. But fortune takes him really to a new level. It makes him so incredibly survivable that it's, it's almost sick, you know? Like any kind of weak, uh, weaker weapons, weapons that are strength 4, or 5, 3... They're, they're almost going to be worthless against this guy because he you know he's going to be able to take 36 of those kind of wounds if he's re-rolling his 3-plus three, uh, three armor. And uh, even against things like LAS cannons, um, you know, like missiles, things like that, I mean, he still re-rolls and discounts 3 out of every 4 wounds that are caused against him because of his invulnerable save. So it's actually going to take him about 16 of those kind of saves before he actually dies. Pretty amazing uh, statistical stats, and it does it does work on the game table that way. He just is a real thug to take down when he has fortune going. So you can you know most armies will have a farseer anyway. You can have a cheap one doing it, or you can do what I do these days and take Eldrad as well, <clears throat> because Eldrad can fortune this guy, still fortune something else maybe, and then still use a third power, maybe doing something, maybe guiding something. Maybe he wants to fortune this guy and double guide or double double doom. You know who knows. It really you don't lose much by by taking this combo, and this guy's also a thug in combat. So, you know, I really take him with fortune. That's the first thing is fortune makes him you know almost impossible for your opponent to deal with without a really dedicated effort. Now, in terms of uh, using him, you're going to send him up the board. He's slow. He doesn't have any uh, m options to move faster or fly around. He just walks around on the board. He's got his six inches that he moves. Plus, he can assault six inches, right? What this means is you want to get him into combats, no matter how meaningless they might be, just so you can gain the extra move, you know? If you're generally trying to go that direction, you know, 30 inches, because it's turn one right now, well, hey, there's some useless guy over here, one little Terminator, oh man, you're just going to pace this guy. Get in there and attack. Maybe it's maybe you think it's a waste, but it's not. Get in there, attack him, cleave him down, and then consolidate, you know? Maybe you only go one inch, maybe you go six inches, but hey, get those free moves. Go into combats with things you're able to consolidate. Uh, out of afterwards as much as possible. Use his Melta, you know, use the Melta. If there's a vehicle over here, throw that Melta, try to blow it up. I mean, if you, if you can't, then assault it. But uh, don't forget he has that Melta. He has a very good ballistic skill, ballistic skill of five. So he's actually going to hit pretty often. He's like, uh, you know, on par with, a, with an Exarch from a Fire Dragon squad. <clears throat> you know, send him at the meanest, toughest things you find. You got some Terminators over here. Man, this is not even close to being enough to take this guy on. Now, consider that these, these, these three guys, if they're decked out with no gear, they're about 120 points. They're almost as expensive as this guy. They really have no hope against this guy. You know, if these are Green Knight Terminators, which uh, these models actually are, their only hope is to try to insta-kill him with, a, um, with the uh, uh, Force weapon. But this is one of the reasons that I always insist on having a Farseer in the army if you're going to take him, at least Eldrad or regular Farseer, because then you can take Runes of Warding. Runes of Warding will make it much less likely for their Force Weapon effect to go off, because a Force Weapon going off is actually a Psychic Power. So they're going to have to roll against Runes of Warding, third dice, you know, 12 or higher, they automatically take perils, and a lot of them are just going to fail. Leadership 9, very good chance they're going to fail. So, you know, that, you're also taking the Farseer to protect this guy. But you send him at the nastiest, heaviest targets that, that there are. He will come out unscathed. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe a wound or two occasionally, but he will just rip through anything. This guy tears through hive tyrants like they were made of butter, as long as you can keep him fortuned. You know, another thing he really gives to your army is <clears throat> a real hammer that can cut your other units out of combats they don't want to be in. You know, perfect example, a Wraith Guard. Imagine, you know, a unit of 10 of these guys. They're, they're fearless, they're, they've got good toughness, but they're not great in melee, especially given how many points they cost. You know, a very common tactic is just some guy charges into these guys with something half decent, ties them up for three or four combats, their guns are wasted, they're out of position, no good. Well, they get, if you keep him close by, they get uh, tied up in combat, he's close by, he gets in there, he just starts ripping through stuff, you know? I mean, these Terminators, they love fighting. They love fighting against uh, Wraith Guard, right? Wraith Guard have no way to pierce their armor. Yeah, they're high strength, but it's not going to matter because they have a 2 plus armor. And their, their, uh, their weapons, even though they might need, uh, you know, sixes to wound, every single one's going to go right through their armor. Well, suddenly, 
Avatar comes in here and just starts tearing these Terminators down, just literally ripping their heads off. Really helps cut these guys out, gets combat resolution, chops these guys down, you know, give them a couple of combats, they'll all be dead. It's just, uh, it's just really key to have a way to chop your units out of combat that they don't want to be in. So that's another use. Another use for this guy that's, uh, that's overlooked, but that bubble of fearlessness can help rallying units that would otherwise be off the board. Here we have a situation. What happened? These guys got into combat with those Terminators. Not surprisingly, combat did not go well for the Eldar uh, Striking Scorpions here. This small unit of three has broken from combat. They're running away. As you know, Terminators cannot cut down units. They're not allowed to uh, execute a sweeping advance. So they moved up, consolidated about five inches. These guys probably ran about ten inches. They're, they're within six inches of these guys, and on top of that, they're below half. So they would never normally be allowed to rally. They're just going to go right off the board. You've lost the use of this excellent Exarch with a power fist, his two buddies, no help. But over here, we have about 15 inches away, we've got a Avatar. Suddenly, Avatar moves up his six inches, puts them inside a bubble, so the next time it comes around to their uh, opportunity, they are automatically going to rally. It doesn't matter that they are below half. They're going to automatically rally. They're going to turn around and face the enemy. They've been inspired by the inspiring presence of the Avatar. And on top of that, he's going to punish these guys. He's just going to charge in and slaughter these guys, beat them to death, call it a day, see you later. And uh, don't, so don't forget to use that inspiring presence bubble uh, in kind of an active way. You see units running off the board, move towards them, get them in that bubble so that they turn around. Very useful. So let's talk about weaknesses. Now, to be honest with you, the Avatar does not have very many weaknesses. It's really hard to complain about this guy when he's relatively cheap for a special character. I mean, there are characters that cost twice as many points as this guy, and they're still not as good. Um, he's got everything he needs. He's got great toughness and strength, an insane weapon skill. He's just a, a, a real combatant, a great and vulnerable, great armor save. Awesome, awesome guy. Um, but, you know, there are some weaknesses. The first weakness is that he's not fast, you know. He has no real boost to his speed. He just walks six inches and then tries to run. You know, walk six inches, tries to run. He, it'll take him a while to get into the opponent, and your opponent's going to want to stay away from him. If your opponent has any sense of experience about this game, they will stay away from this guy. I mean, this the Avatar with Fortune, assuming Fortune gets through the um, the psychic hood of uh, Mephist, someone like Mephiston, you know, but of course that's why you have Eldrad maybe nearby in a vehicle, try to cast it twice on him. I mean, if this guy has Fortune, he will obliterate Mephiston. Mephiston will be like a four-wound, you know, space marine against this guy. And, uh, you know, the only hope Mephiston has is the next weaken, weakness uh, that this guy has, and that is uh, to try to insta The point being, uh, if you have your runes of warding going off, it's no guarantee that even, even if you get a wound through the four-plus re-rollable, invulnerable with fortune then uh, there's no guarantee that that psychic effect is going to work, though, the force weapon effect, because it's going to have to get through runes of warding. So that's his other weakness. You know, how do you get around the speed weakness? Like I said, use combats to get consolidation moves. Every consolidation is a free D6 move. Use those free moves. Use those consolidations. Fight as often as possible. doesn't matter what it is. Just cleave through it and get the free move. That will go a long way to making this guy faster and letting him get around the board. Um... How do you avoid the instant kill? You know, certain things like a Broodlord, for instance, implant attack. If he gets that six against you, you know, you're just going to have to suck it up. You've got to make that, that four plus re-rollable invulnerable if you're fortunate, yeah, hopefully. You know, if you're not fortunate, you've got to make that four plus invulnerable. I mean, it's the only drawback to this guy. It's the only weakness he has is that he can be insta-killed. Shocking, I know. Look how badass he looks, but apparently he is a lesser kind of demon than the ones that have been released in recent years since the Eldar Codex came out. Keep in mind, however, that as a monstrous creature, he can never join units. He can also never create units, um, you know, uh, with with any other characters. So you can't, like, you know, put you can't put Eldrad with him and create a super unit, where then Eldrad gets to have, you know, <laughs> toughness six as majority toughness. I mean, you can't do that. Um, <clears throat> you know, he's not allowed to join into units that he wasn't a part of to start. Um, you know, he doesn't have the benefit, like, for instance, the Hive Tyrant, who can join the Hive Guard, and suddenly he'd be just like a, you know, like a, a leader of the unit. Or to be like a, uh, a Tomb Spider, which uh, can be bought in units of up to three. I mean, this guy is literally just on his own. He will always be on his own. He will just eat fire and, and uh, you know, and, 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 and take, you know, punches in the face by himself. He'll never have a unit around him. However, he is very resilient.
All right, so final thoughts. Um, you know, I, I really do like the avatar. I've I've had nothing but success using him uh, as long as I've keep you know been able to keep him fortuned and uh, really kind of you know gotten him into those combats where he you know people have to contend with his survivability and his melee abilities. You know, if you just move him around slowly, not fortuned, getting shot at, yeah, he will go down. He will go down. But uh, even then, he still will take a lot of firepower to kill. Okay, guys, so uh, I hope that was in some way helpful, and uh, like always, thanks for watching.